We took it slowly, siga siga. Huh? Could a simple question change your life? Uh, let's see. So one of the, um, just to give you an idea, this is our beautiful faces here <laughs> before this question. And this is one of the things that happened after the question. <laughs> so on the bicycle with the Pakistani clothes, it's me, Marco, from Italy. And I think you guess. With the goat and this green scarf, this is me, Tiffany, from France. <laughs> Miss Marco, in the last three years and three months, we have been cycling and sailing from Europe to Asia and back home. We crossed 33 countries. We did 25,000 kilometers by bicycle and 6,000 miles by sailing boat. But this is just some figures, map, pictures. What pushes us to live for this adventure? What pushes us to keep going and to eventually come back? Everything started from a simple question. And every time we ask ourselves this question, it has been an important moment in our life. And now we want to share with you these moments. So first moment was 2012. It's not the end of the world, as some fake interpretation Maya said, but it's the end of my world. In few months, I lost everything. I lost my job, my career, my house, my car, my girlfriend, but I found a treasure. Wait, not this treasure. <laughs> this treasure. In 2012, in 2012, I had a job. I had a very good salary. I had friend, boyfriend, everything to be happy, right? But I confess, I was not completely satisfied with my life. Something was missing, but what? So one day we were in the car and we were talking together and I told her, I confess, I lost everything and I'm confused and I really don't know what to do. When I heard that, I was so shocked. Why? Because you were exactly in the situation I was dreaming about. To be free without any obligation, free to start a new life, to do what you like to do. Be free, uh, do what you want, follow your dreams. To be honest, I didn't know what you were talking about, eh? like this. <laughs> but I understood a few months later. It was the beginning of summer, and a friend of mine told me about his booth experience. I loved the idea, uh, so I didn't have a job. I left and I went in France. By the way, who knows what is woof? Raise up your hands. You know what is woof? I know that you know. So many the people I see don't know what is WOOF. <laughs> WOOF stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farm. It's basically an exchange, an exchange without money, where you go help in an organic farm a few hours per day and uh, in exchange of food and accommodation. Of course, it's much more than that. People do for uh, uh, learning, as us, for traveling. It's very cool experience and you should try. When you finish, your woofing experience, yeah, what happened? I, so just the day to, before to come back uh, in Italy, uh, in the evening, it was the last day of my woof experience, I was talking with another girl. And while we were talking, uh, I was complaining, huh? as usual. Uh, I have to come back to Italy, uh, I have to find a new job, I don't want to come back to Italy, I don't want to find a new job. So, uh, while I was talking, she stops me and she tells me something very easy, very simple. She say, hey Marco, if you don't want to do that, why do you do that? <laughs> yeah, right. So in the first seconds I was just saying uh, automatically, yeah, I have to do because of this, because of that. Then I realize and think in my mind, and you say, yeah, she's right, why should I do that? So in that particular moment, I realized two important things. I can actually do what I want to do, if I really want, and that the only limit between me and my dream is just myself. Thank you. But Thank you. <laughs> this is a big step when you realize this. Once I realized that, wait, there was another uh, thing happening. Uh, because if I just tell you like that, you wouldn't understand, right? You wouldn't understand uh, because also the day when she told me the same things, I was not understanding. Here we go. <laughs> and um, you know why I was not understanding? 
because I was just using my mind, my logic, and not my heart. How many times, I'm sure you told yourself, I can't. Huh? You, you told yourself, I can't. I can't because uh, I have no money, because I have uh, no job, I can't. Uh, because I have children. I can't because I have a wife. I'm not the wife. <laughs> <laughs> not <girlfriend>. yet. <laughs> I can't because of the system, because of the politician. I can't for many reasons. All these I can't, I realized they were just excuses for my mind and they were not a limit anymore. So you see how the perspective has changed, right? So at that time, I knew what I wanted to do. A woman always smarter than men, eh? <laughs> I wanted to quit the stress of my job and the stress of the city. I wanted to discover new countries, new cultures, different ways of life. And the idea of a long bicycle trip was starting to grow in my mind. But sure, I had fears, like all the things that Marco said before. And when I talk with people about changing my life, they help me very well to make the list of the fears longer, you know? You need a lot of money for traveling and you want to quit your job and you don't watch the TV? All these countries you want to go, they are just so dangerous. Anyway, the following summer, with Marco, we decided to have a different kind of holiday. Two weeks by bicycle in the south of Italy, with no plan except enjoying the place, and no car to carry our luggage, no hotel. And even if we didn't have our usual comfort, like a shower every day and the morning tea and coffee, we enjoy it so much. And then, I'm sure you know that moment, where the holiday finish and you have to go back to work. So I had to go back to work and I, I thought, why am I doing things that I like only during my holiday? It's five weeks in a year and few weekends, so it means that most of the time I'm doing things that I don't enjoy. Anyway, I was back to my work on my computer, on the phone, doing my engineering stuff, but I couldn't concentrate myself. And I was always thinking, I don't know if I can achieve what I want to do if I don't even try, right? I have to try. And I thought what my grandmother often say, only people doing nothing do not make mistakes. So your grandmother was right, but enough talking, it's time for action. Right. So first step, I had to quit my job. I felt like a superhero on an important mission going with my bicycle to my work. But when I was there, it took me two months before I just there knocking at the door of my boss and say, you know, I'm leaving the company. But then I went back home with my bicycle and I was feeling so relieved and I wonder why I didn't do that before. So I was ready to leave my dream, go and travel. Hey, and what about me? Oops, <laughs> I just forget the details. What about you? Were you ready? So I don't know if I was ready, but after this roof experience, I came back to Italy and I already had an arranged interview with a super mega manager of a huge multinational company, okay? So the day of the interview, while this guy was talking with all these marketing slangs above the line, below the line, consumer strategy, I was just thinking of me the day before in the countryside milking two goats. <laughs> They had two names. I was even calling them Bibin, Black Cat. And they were coming like that. Bam, man, like milk me, milk me. Perfect. So the, <laughs> in that moment, I realized that this business world was not belonging to me anymore, right? But once I realized that, another simple question came to my mind. If I can do what I want, as I said before, what is that I want? Huh? It's a simple question, but difficult to answer. You know why? Because I never ask myself. I never ask myself, what do I like? So again, I was confused. But well, don't worry. If you are lost and confused, there is a magic solution for you. Go on the internet. All right, not yeah, she, <laughs> she's not joking. I went on the internet and I found a video about life coach speaking saying, if you're lost and confused, so that was my case, Grab a piece of paper and write down, without any conditioning, 10 things that you like to do. Then choose two of them. So I did it, and guess what I chose? I want to travel and not work anymore. <laughs> Good luck, Marco. But enough talking also for you. Action! All right, so I have a mission now. My first purpose is to travel, right? So, how to travel when you don't have a lot of money? Check this video. So, our main uh, expenses when we were traveling before was hotel, 
transportation, and restaurant. We replace all of that with camping stove, bicycle, and tent. Easy. And in this way, you can travel everywhere, and it's really cheap. Even here in the Kazakh desert, where there is nearly nothing, I promise you can survive. Yeah, but of course we use some money. How much it costs? About five euro per day per person in average. It's like a price of packets of cigarettes, right? Yeah, I mean, if you make a short calculation, it means that if you have less than 2,000 euro, you can travel for a year. I was spending this money before when I was working for two weeks holiday only. So anyway, what about your second mission? Second mission is not, not work? work anymore. When I say not work anymore, I actually mean depend less on money, right? We understood during the travel that we need to learn how to be self-sufficient. And in order to achieve this purpose, we stop during the travel in some eco projects and we found them through Woof and similar network. So our main expenses when we were working before was pay the house, as everybody, pay the bills, as everybody, the food and transportation, right? So what house. What about the home? House. I don't know your situation, but right now, in this moment, I have a 30 years mortgage for a 30 square meter hole in Milan, right? So we learned during the travel that a house, we can build it by ourselves. An eco house like this, you only need three months. It means the day I will build it, I have gained 29 years and nine months of holiday, right? And look the beautiful result that you can get. And you are lucky, you people of Patras, why? Because this project is just near this place. It's in the little village of Seliana. And it's one of the best projects we have seen in the last three years. Right. So, food. food. As the house, we learned that we can grow it by ourselves. It's 100% natural and so delicious. And it's so nice to be in the garden. And we experiment a biodynamic project in Georgia. So nice experience. And for then, the energy. Transportation. Uh, transportation. Energy. <laughs> energy. <laughs> uh, for energy, we uh, learned that there are many solutions. Uh, uh, you can make energy from wind, sun, uh, water, so much. So if you don't want to eat raw food, you can use this solar kitchen. We experimented in Portugal, and I promise it's worked. There, there are so many solutions that we will probably need another TEDx only for this topic. And then, last but not least, transportation. I guess you already know our answer is bicycle. I think it. Right. There is a very common question that people ask us. Is, did we plan in advance this world trip? I guess you understood that with bicycle, you don't need to plan too much. You can just go and see what happened. And I tell you, when you don't plan, crazy things can happen. For example, that day. In we Georgia. were in Georgia, climbing a 2,000 meter high pass, sweating and 2,000 meter high, Pass, it took us five days to yeah. do it. Because <laughs> we are not so fit. Uh, maybe people think we are good sportive people. Too but, much pizza. <laughs> but no. <laughs> so anyway, finally, after five days, we reached the top. And, uh, but then some policemen start to come toward us. And we say, oh, maybe we are in trouble. But a few seconds later, we were, we were drinking, drinking wine. wine and cha cha with them. And they were shooting in the air each time we were giving a I toast. tried. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And the same day, we had to go down the pass. So while we were going down, a little bit like this, <laughs> after Drunk. all this alcohol, then a woman appeared in the middle of nowhere, and she was celebrating her birthday, and she invited us. Then uh, the evening, so we were looking for a place for our tent. Where are we going to sleep tonight, right? Yeah. But then a big hail started to fall, like a big ball of heights. It was really painful, and we were really in trouble. I said, okay, if I put the tent now, it will break the tent. And then we continued a little bit, and we saw a man waving at us, and uh, we ran inside his house. And then inside, it was a whole completely different atmosphere. It was his wife. She was making cheese on the old stove, and then the man started to pray, asking God to stop the hail. It was another world in our same planet. It's just an expected situation. And this is for this kind of moment that we keep going traveling. So maybe you wonder, so why we came back, so? Yeah, why? <laughs> and uh, so 
after two years and a half of trip, so we were uh, reaching in Indonesia, and we were in a little paradise island. And we both felt tired of traveling, I think, at that time. And we were like, okay, let's go home maybe, but not with a flight, we want to go slow, and uh, we see some sailing boats, and uh, we heard about some hitchhiking by boat. I said, ah, it's a let's, good idea. let's try, why not? Yeah. So we start to look in some marina, in some special website to find a boat, and, uh, but people say, really, like, uh, forget about that. You have no experience in, uh, with a sailing boat, and uh, no skipper will agree that you go on board. I would do but bicycles. We were patient and determined. So we wait, and one day, we received a call from James. James Bond? Nearly like this. <laughs> he was coming with his sailing boat from Australia. And two days later, we were part of the crew with our bicycle. And then two months later, we spent Christmas in the Maldives together. <laughs> Again, it's one of the ex he unexpected situations. You wanted to stop two situation. months there. It's OK. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went to Oman. They dropped us there. We decided to cycle again. And we spent some day with some fishermen eating lobster on the beach with camels around us and dolphins in front. What to ask? More. <laughs> and, yeah. and then we crossed Iran. I think this birthday I will always remember when we were in the, in the desert. And two months ago, we arrived in France. Yeah. And now, what to do what again? To do? Again, this question. So we choose a new mission. We want to settle somewhere and put into practice all the sustainable way of living that we learn. In the last years, we did a simple thing. We've been following what we like, and this brings us a lot of joy and happiness. And you, what do you like to do? When do you start? Remember, the limits are just in your head. But enough talking, right? Right. Action! Action. I've got to stop. Thank you.